World War II was kind of the spur that helped both sides of my family right, yeah. to kind of get out of that cycle of poverty. Yeah. These enormous dust storms would literally pick up hundreds of tons of earth from the dried out fields that were affected by this horrible drought and just dump it like, like it's rain. Uh, one of his close friends there did the same thing, fell in and died, uh, like died in a giant vat of vinegar. I mean, so one of the things about this podcast is, right, I don't want to only focus on like nice, happy, wonderful things, you know, with while always being respectful and always sort of, you know, having an understanding of people's humanity, I do think it's important to delve into things that are not always sometimes great, you know, that and that are kind of moments of human suffering and kind of, you know, trail, travails and, and tr the trials and tribulations of, you know, of existence. And so if you want to talk about the Dust Bowl, because that is... Yeah. Another thing that I think a lot of people do know about Oklahoma, um, I mean, it's certainly something I know a little bit about. I'm not by any means an expert on it, though. Um, I'd love to he kind of hear about that, especially for people who maybe don't know what the Dust Bowl was. Yeah, certainly. Well, um, I guess, okay, starting from the very beginning, the Dust Bowl was this giant series of droughts, or small series of droughts, actually, that all added up to a giant drought. Uh, all through the Great Plains states, um, from like North Dakota down to even parts of Texas. Mm. So it's just an enormous swath of uh, territory. Uh, I think it was 1932 is when the yes. very first dust storm. Early 30s, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, like, it, it did really, it took everyone by surprise. It was mostly, what people don't realize, uh, and this is something I didn't realize until relatively, like, recently talking through the family and everything, is farmers really were like, poised to become like the next, like the equivalent of like cryptocurrency millionaires, yeah. where it was a thing that people didn't really see. Wheat prices shot up enormously kind of in the, in the, at, at the end of World War I. Okay. Uh, and all of a sudden these people who are out on the prairies, who are kind of, you know, know nothing shit kickers, honestly, you know, for like- They're, they're Oki, Okies from, <laughs> yes. Okies from Muskogee. Yeah, like it, it really is, you know, but um, they were finding themselves poised to be kind of the next class of millionaire. Yeah. And it, and, you know, that, that had like implications because another thing a lot of people don't know about is uh, Oklahoma was a socialist hotbed for many, many years. I did not know that. The state motto is a socialist motto, but that's all been kind of repudiated. Yeah, but um, labor okay. omnia vincent, uh, okay. uh, vincent uh, okay. which is uh, th uh, labor conquers all, okay. basically. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, you know, we can go back through that too. But, but yeah, the Dust Bowl was a really terrible time. It was... The, the notable thing, and the reason it was called the Dust Bowl, is that these enormous dust storms would literally pick up hundreds of tons of earth from the dried out fields uh, that were affected by this horrible drought and just dump it like, like it's rain on people and pe people died. Uh, if you were caught out in it un un unprepared uh, it, and you were sensitive to that kind of thing, you could just outright die, but there were tens of thousands of deaths to something called silicosis, which okay. is the same thing that uh, miners suffer from, black lung. And this is particulates this is, in yes. the... This is like soil lung, basically. Soil lung, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, they don't call it that really, but you know... It but is, that's basically what it is. It is, it's the equivalent of black lung. Uh, I mean, and they, you know, they really don't have an accounting of how many people died, but it is, yeah. like it's thought to be in the tens of thousands, and that's with hundreds of thousands of people leaving the area to come to places right. like California, yeah. which... Yeah. Uh, in the case of my grandfather, both of my grandfathers are actually old enough to have been in the Dust Bowl, but one of them is old enough to be on the cusp of adulthood. The other one was a child, a very small yeah, child. Yeah. Uh, the older grandfather, uh, his family were, uh, they lived in a place called Walters, Oklahoma. Uh, they were cotton farmers and everything went to shit uh, yeah. when they, you know, cotton is uh, notoriously hard on the environment already. Yeah. Yeah. And it requires a lot of, it requires a, a lot of irrigation or a lot of rain. And we, we had neither of those. So they literally broke up the family and shipped them out to different places. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather's big story, like he had a bunch of smaller stories, but the one that always really stuck in my head as a kid was um, they shipped him out to California mm -hmm. and it was like a, it was like a Hunt's factory, like okay. the, the ketchup makers. But he was okay. making vinegar, okay. uh, and, the, and literally, this is like, you know, this is like 1933, 1934. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, literally, they just have these kids, like 16-year-old kids, over these giant vats of vinegar, uh, you know, the grape mashings and things <laughs> like that, and they, you have to stir them up. I don't really understand the process, yeah. honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like, 
he was almost overcome. They have no respirators or anything like right. that. He made the mistake of looking over uh, the edge of the thing and was almost overcome. But literally uh, two days after that, uh, one of his close friends there did the same thing, fell in and died. Uh, yeah. Like died in a giant vat of vinegar. Like yeah. uh, just it, the insanity of those times. Like yeah. you, you, nothing yeah. like that should ever happen. No, 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 no. And I mean, it's interesting. I think, you know, sort of the 30s is, I don't want to say like a turning point, but that kind of phase where, you know, like late 1800s and early 20th yeah. century, that's just like, oh, that's just what happens. Like, yeah. oh, you know, little Timmy got his arm cut off by like a thresher. Like, that's fine. And, but by like, you know, the 50s, World War yes. II, it's like we've kind of stopped all that. And now there's like workplace safety and we've got, you know, OSHA violations and stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Um, but still in the 30s, I could see like there's still a lot of that transitioning into I agree, yeah. a safer workplace concept. Yeah. And that's been my kind of uh, thought process too about like that transition point. It had to have been World War II. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People were fed up of dying after yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe things. we should have a workplace safety yeah. <laughs> like authority who doesn't let little children no, fall I, into vats yeah. of malt vinegar and drown. No, uh, no, like no, no. Uh, just uh, insane. And uh, yeah. my other grandfather was also shipped out here. But the interesting thing there is, um, like all of my family is a little economically challenged, honestly. Um, they were coal miners. They were from a family of coal miners, except uh, his father, my great grandfather, mm -hmm. got black lung very early, okay. uh, and they pulled him out of the mines. Like they cared about that in the twenties, they did. Yes, but I sure, don't. Sure. Honestly, it feels like it must have been like they were afraid of their productivity would fall or something yeah. at that yeah. point. But yeah. you know, they had radiographs. They take a radiograph. If you have a spot on your lung, you're out. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. they had no income. So they came out here in World War II, like is a story that we've heard before, was actually an economically good thing for them because yeah. he was employed in the defense industries. Yes. My great grandmother was building ships here in California. And my grandma Jessie was in there in those empty holes, like, you know, bolting, bolting uh, bolt stuff together. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I d but, um, and that was kind of the story of my whole family is World War II was kind of the spur that helped both sides of my family right, yeah. to kind of get out of that cycle of poverty, actually. And I think that's true for uh, for tens of millions of, I mean, the country really as a whole, that's yeah. kind of what, what sort of, t I mean, turned it around, you know, in terms yeah. of getting everyone like back, that, I mean, that is, you know, pretty much the narrative of getting everyone back to work. Yeah. yeah. And to bring it back to Oklahoma, I do, I feel like that was a very common story. I, I like to talk to people, like I like yeah. to talk to older people, especially yeah, and get yeah, their yeah. stories. Yeah, yeah. And that was such a common, I, and I think nationally too, it's a common mm -hmm. narrative, mm -hmm. but it definitely helped a lot of people in Oklahoma, yes, yeah, which yeah. is sad because I mean, it's a global war. Also, I'm sure tens of, well, maybe not tens of thousands, tens of thousands of Oklahomans may have died right, in yeah, a state yeah. of two yeah. million probably at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like it, it you know, it, uh, but it is like, it, it, that was one of the notable things, uh, you know, the Dust Bowl, really hurt that region mm -hmm. terribly. Mm -hmm. All those potential millionaire farmers found themselves yes. losing their land, yep. becoming yep. sharecroppers on their own land yep. Yep. because they'd taken on all this debt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then wham, uh, you have World War II and all of a sudden people are going to college, you know, that would yep. never have gone to college, uh, things like that. Yeah.